Chapter 3 It was a national gathering of axe men. While the singing youths danced round in a huge circle, a council of elders, none of them up to thirty, sat on the ground, in a much tighter circle, and deliberated on two major items. The first item was the information reaching the temple, that the school authorities were on the verge of lifting the ban on student unionism in Liberty University. The temple leaders agreed that the axemen must not be caught napping. They decided to comb the temple, for the most suitable candidates to be sponsored for strategic positions in the union. It was decided that such candidates must be students who have concealed their membership well enough who are presentable, eloquent, popular, and resourceful. The task of sourcing for the most suitable axemen was assigned to the chief priest and the chairman of the Council of Elders. The second item was how to celebrate the annual Black Uhuru Day. It commemorates the Sharpeville massacre which occurred on the 21st of March 1960 at the police station in the South African town of Sharpeville. On that date, after a day of demonstrations against the past laws, a crowd of over 5,000 black African protesters went to the police station. The South African police opened fire on the crowd, killing 69 people. Differ Johnson was among the elite group deliberating on these coming events. He was, however, silent throughout the deliberations, because of the presence of David Amicon the hideous son of a court of appeal judge who preferred to be called Snake. Apart from the fact that Differ hated the pointless murders Snake was notorious for, the limping cousin of Medusa was never an elder in any of the campuses he was rusticated from. He never graduated from any campus either, so he was technically not a lord. His presence in the council meeting was infuriating, but since no one else flagged it, Differ kept the peace in silence. Sipping the potent punch of the temple, the moment of silence observed for the victims of the massacre, reminded Differ of the student, who fell from the speeding bus, during the Liberty University protest, in May last year. A recurrent recollection that was always sodden with guilt, and grief. After that boy's reckless death, the wind was plucked out of the protest of May. The army of students who accepted Differ as protest commander was reduced to zero, less than one hour after the accident. All that Differ achieved was a feeling of guilt, and a student's suspension that lasted for two months. The ejection of the students from the campus, that day in May, was rapid, and the expected defiance was abortive. Differ Johnson arrived in his neighborhood late at night and knocked on the wooden windows of his friends, Peter and Paul, the twins who had a room of their own. Who's there? Differ. Man Differ, I saw you on television. Really? Rebel leader, I'm coming out. Why is Paul coming out, instead of letting me in? And where is Peter? Differ heard a whisper before the lock ticked open. There was a lady with him. Paul emerged. My girlfriend is around. Man differ. Where is P. Roski? He has gone to Belgium. Cool. He got a visa at last. When did he leave? You don't show up in the arena anymore. He's been gone for over a year. He has a wife and a child over there. Really? That was sharp, man. The marriage was arranged. White lady flew to Nigeria. They got married here and left together. Ten months after, they had a son, Van Piriski, sharper than Razor. I am sure you'll be joining him soon. No way. He sends home second-hand vehicles and stuff. I clear them, sell them, and remit. That's the arrangement. But a lot of guys have left the arena since you stopped coming home. Really? Let me guess. The Bible. The Bible is very much around. He is the Don making money from arranging the trips abroad. This marriage level is his racket. He has package, easy, skinazo, scatter, busy bug, piccolo, tegase, and osazilla. So scatter has gone abroad. Scatter hit the jackpot. Area scatter in USA. 
scatter and piccolo are flying high in US man differ. You need to see the car, scatter sent home last Christmas. Easy and Ossetilla are in England, Skinnerzo, Busy Bug, and Tedese are in Germany. Remember that guy from the Yodusa Street, Busy Gala, he died of cold in Canada. You have mentioned all the hard guys, Man Paolo, who've left in the arena. Many, man differ, many have migrated. By boat, by camel, by any means available, there has been a massive exodus from this arena, to various corners of the earth. Some even sold the father's houses and plots, some have died, and some are in jail. Our girls are traveling out to Italy, in droves, man differ. Some have gone to hell. Nebraska and Godfather were caught stealing somewhere recently. A mob drove mole nails into the skulls, and they died on the street like dogs. Godfather, I can't place a face to it, the guy that's always shouting, God damn, to everything he hears, we used to call him, God damn, he was a good goalkeeper in those days, that's the fellow. Tall, dark, and wasted. Then a bolo, your henchman in primary school, is late as well. He went to rob, and insisted on raping the madam of the house. When they were caught, he was found poisoned in the cell. Last time I met him, he told me he was now a professional driver. That was his day job. At night, he drove robbers. He didn't consider his poor mother at all. Man differ, you have become a stranger in this arena. Didn't you hear that his mother went to Italy three years ago? For crying out loud, to do what? Apart from Patricia Coco and Matilda O'Wanna Ferry, who are nurses over there, all our ladies in Italy are hustlers. Most of our guys in Turkey and Belgium are peddlers. I hear the police raid us regularly these days. That's because of Lawrence Anini and his gang. But Anini is not from our arena. I should know him if he lived here. He never lived here, but you know him very well. Remember Fire Fire? Who doesn't? There was a guy that was his stunt driving partner. They used to display exciting driving stunts. The guy they said was the chairman of the motor park. Bullseye. That's the notorious enemy that is holding the nation hostage. But Fire Fire died years ago. Sure. But through that connection, some of our wayward girls have been dating Anony and his men. You don't say. Until the raids became too heavy, they used to come here. In broad daylight and smoke along our streets. With two or three girls. Each. You don't mean it. Drama. One girl is in charge of the cigarette or grass, one is holding the bottle of brandy and the third half the glass. If they are two girls, then one will be in charge of the bottle and the other will be in charge of cigarette and glass. Doing what? Holding the grass or cigarette sticks to their lips, while another fills the glasses and holds them up to be drained and refilled. In this our arena, on our streets, street drama, man differ. Like a mini carnival, Anubi's favorites were Psyker's huge daughters. Like a sausage between two huge loaves of bread. No glasses in his own case. Just grass and brandy from the bottle, direct. Those shameless daughters of a shameless mother, used to drink from that same bottle, and were sleeping with the same man, a known killer. Man Paolo, my ears are full. Those proud girls of our neighborhood, who used to fight for being rude without enough respect, are now disrespecting themselves, on our very own streets. Got to push my legs. I'll leave my stuff here and pick them up later. So where are you going to crash? Koloski, my man. I'm from this arena. I should be able to find my level. Last resort. I could crash in our house. But I'll start from Eki's crib. A tap on her window at this time. Will earn me lodging till cockcrow. Before her old man wakes up. Man differ. Don't tell me you're still cruising that chick. 